Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing how to install a coil conversion kit on a lawn tractor with a Kohler engine. And what I'll be doing this on today is a Craftsman lawn tractor. And it's got a Kohler 26 horsepower Courage engine. The symptoms are that it's running on one cylinder and you cannot just go and buy the one coil because they're superseded to a coil kit. What I'm going to do just to show you is I will start it running on the one cylinder. I've got a spark tester here on the side that is not working. So you're going to see it's not going to be lighting up in here. But the other side does work so you will notice that the engine sounds different now than it will at the end of the video. So I'll just start it up here. So as you heard there, it doesn't sound quite normal. You can tell it's running on one cylinder. And you could see in my tester here that it was not lighting up. And it made no difference whether I unplugged it from the plug or not either. So the coil on this side is totally shot. Now the first thing you need to do is to remove this top cover. There are small bolts all around the cover. And on this side here, there will be bolts that hold the fuel pump here to the cover. You need to remove those as well. There's another bolt here, and there's one here and one on the other side at the back there as well. Now once those bolts are removed, just simply pull up on the cover. And you can see the two coils over here, one's there, one's on the other side. This one's bad as we saw earlier in the startup. And you can see they've got all kinds of wires going to them. So what I'm going to do now is just unplug both coils. And I'll remove the two eight millimeter bolts. And you'll need to save these bolts. Now if you're doing this repair on this same engine as I am today, what you need to do is to come up here on this one plug which has the wires coming from the tractor. Snip them right up here. The red and the white. And right below here, you can either snip the wire or take the bolt, take the eyelet out and put it back. I'm just going to snip the wire because it's a ground, it won't hurt anything. Now I'll take the wiring harness off the manifold. Now on the other side of the harness, what you need to do is cut this wire, the red one over here, that goes to the solenoid on the carb. And now you can remove the harness. You do not need this anymore. Now with the wire stripper, I'm going to strip about a quarter inch. Now the reason I'm doing this with the wires, again, as I mentioned, this goes to the solenoid on the carburetor. This is your power wire coming from the tractor. And this is your kill wire. So what you need to do with this wire here is hook it up to the one that goes to the solenoid like this. And I'm going to crimp the wires with this small pigtail here to hold them together. And these are crimping pliers. And here's the coil replacement kit here. This all comes with it. You have this small bag with the zip ties and the wire and the instructions are in there. However, I find the instructions quite vague for some things. It never mentioned the red wire going to the carburetor solenoid. That's why I had to modify the wire like I showed you. So on the instructions, this is the one we're working on, the DSAI modules. And there's also instructions for the DSAM modules. And you can just read all the instructions here. However, if you follow my video, you won't have any issues. And here are the coils. And here are the old coils. You can see they're quite different from the new ones over here. Basically these ones required power from the tractor to operate. These ones don't. So basically we're reverting back to the old style coils. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're tried and tested so we know they work well. 
I get a lot of machines come in the shop with these coils and I need to do the coil conversion like I'm doing today. And if you fix a lot of small engines, it's not a bad idea to keep a set of this conversion kit in your stock. And here's the part number for this coil conversion kit. It's part number 32 space 707 space 01 dash S. There is a link under the video to where you can buy these. Also, if you're a Canadian viewer, you can purchase these directly from me. Just contact me via YouTube or Facebook. And now before installing the new coils, grab a wire brush and just scuff this up to make sure it's got a good ground. You don't want any dirt in there. And just do the same on the other side. And now when you install the coils back on, you want the flat side to be facing up. Just line it up here. Now what you want is the magnet to be away from the coils for now. I'm going to use a business card, so we're looking at approximately 10 thousandths of an inch of a gap between the coils and the magnet. So for now I'm just going to leave the bolts loose. I'm just going to bring them right down. And now what you want to do is pull back on the coil, turn the flywheel so the magnets come right underneath. And once the business card is in to create a gap, you can actually tighten up the two bolts. And I believe the torque specs are around 55 inch pounds. I'm just going to do it by hand like this without a torque wrench. Just use common sense, put it on fairly tight. And once you've got it tightened up, just move the flywheel to get the business card out or your FEMA gauge, whatever you're using. And again, just line up the magnet to the coil like I did on the other side with the business card in there. Tighten up the two bolts evenly. Now remove the business card. Now what you need is the wiring harness from the kit and the small connector here and the zip ties. Now what you need to do with this harness is hook it up to the connectors on the coils. And what you want is the part of the harness with the small wire sticking out here to be close to the white wire that we clipped earlier. They're actually going to be connected together. Now you need this small connector from the kit. Just basically snip the excess plastic. And now you want to connect it to the wire coming from the tractor. That's the one I snipped earlier. And once you've crimped it, just test it, just pull a bit on it to make sure it's on there nice and solid. And now just connect it with the other connector here. And now what you need to do is run the coil wires where they should over here. Plug them in on the spark plugs. And do the same thing on this side. Tuck the wire away in like that. Plug it in. So now what I'm going to do is start it up, make sure it runs. Once I know it runs properly, I'm going to zip tie all the wires to the manifold here. After that, I'll put the cover back on.
so now I know everything's hooked up properly, it works good. I'm just going to give you another look at the wiring configuration here before I tie wrap it to the manifold. So here's your wires coming in from the tractor. You've got the red, the white. You want to connect the white from the tractor to the white on the wiring harness that is connected to the coils. And then the red wire coming from the tractor, if you have a solenoid on your carburetor, it gets connected to that wire. And this is where the wire goes down to that solenoid, which is right under here. And another tip guys, when you do this repair and you turn the key on after you've connected the wires, specifically the red wire here, you wanna make sure that you hear the solenoid click. So I'll turn the key here and listen for that click. And you can hear that click. I'm just flipping the switch back and forth. And that's good. So now I'm just gonna put the tie wraps to hold the wires properly so they don't hit the flywheel. And you want this to be all nice and neat. And you can run the wires between the grooves here or the tabs. And once you have the zip ties on, just snip the ends. It'll just keep it looking neater. And here's one last look at the wiring. Okay guys, now I'm ready to put the cover back on. Now to bolt back the fuel pump, you want to use these coarse bolts here. And I'm going to tighten up these two bolts by hand because it's really easy to strip the plastic threads. And the other two coarse bolts that you will have in your collection go right here where they bolt into plastic as well. Now just use the rest of the bolts. One goes over here. Another one goes right back here. And what works good to tighten up the one at the back there is a ratcheting wrench like this. Again, it's an eight millimeter. And on this side, you have one that goes over here. There is a clamp here to hold the wire and the cables. And the last bolt goes right here at the back. And I'll just use my ratcheting wrench again here. And at this point, it pretty well finishes up the job, guys. As you can see, it's not that hard to replace the conversion kit. And I've had to do many of these as well on the Kohler engines. On the Briggs & Stratton engines, I don't have that issue. I rarely replace coils on the Briggs & Stratton V-twin engines. But for some unknown reason, on the Kohler engines, I replace so many coils during the season. And after you put the cover on, just start it up again, just to make sure that everything's okay. So thanks again for watching guys. As you saw in the video, it's not that hard to do the coil conversion kit. Also make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and have yourselves a great day.